Armas. Mary New Mary, you guys. Amazing. Cannot believe this. Um, who fucked up my intro? <laughs> yeah. Get out of my sight. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I didn't really know uh, the story I was going to tell, obviously, my own. I kind of overthought it, like I, I do with everything, and I wasn't quite sure what perspective. Uh, I let Mary tag me in the event, and me sharing the event was the first time a lot of my family and people found out that I had an abortion. Um, it wasn't something I ever talked about. Very few people had actually known. And being able to get ready for this storytelling show allowed me to deal with the fact that I hadn't dealt with having had the abortion. Um, and I, it's not to say that I regret it because I don't in any way, shape, or form. The decision for me was pretty automatic, um, which was surprising to myself. But it was something that I always thought, for the most part, I was very pro-choice. And I just always thought, you know, but that's just not a choice I would make. And then I found myself in that situation, and it was automatically <laughs> the choice that I had to make. And I did. Um, we never talked about anything in my family. You know, the, I, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'll have five years on June 2nd. And <laughs> It's not always, uh, it's not always the, the response in a bar full of people, which is where a lot of comedy happens. So I will take it. I will take that applause break until it is more. Um, but we didn't. We didn't talk about anything. A lot of my family just ignores the fact that I'm an alcoholic, and I talk about that all over the place all the time. I have no problem telling people that I'm an alcoholic. I'll tell you about both my DUIs, my stints in jail, uh, in the Oxford house, you know, I'll, I'll talk about all of that, but for whatever reason, I didn't talk about my abortion. And I don't necessarily know what that was, other than the fact that me not talking about it meant that I couldn't heal or deal with any of it. Um, the only sex talk I ever had from my parents was very, it was, we were coming home from Costco, it was from the curbside unloading groceries to the door, and my mom said, you know if you ever get pregnant, you won't have a home, right? And I was like, <laughs> that was it. I was like, all right, well, that's all I needed to hear, which was fine. I wasn't having sex. <laughs> you know, like, it just wasn't an option for me. Uh, I didn't have sex until way late. It just wasn't something that I was into until I was, like, 20, I think I lost my virginity. I don't know. Um, but when I was drinking, I was very active in my addiction from 20, 21 for sure, all the way through to uh, 28 when I got sober, and I, I always thought, you know, if I talk about being a recovering alcoholic and having an abortion, it makes a lot more sense if I had done that while I was drinking, but I didn't. And so I wasn't quite sure, you know, how to just have that be a part of my story that I was comfortable telling, because I made that decision 100% sober. And I did it about 13, 14, 15 months uh, into my sobriety. And at the time, I was dating this guy. I was 20, I was 29, and he was 22. And I don't recommend that. Uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Just don't do it. Learn from me, if you will. And, uh, you know, it was fine. Like, it was just, it was, I was sober, and I was enjoying life, and we were dating, and it was fun. But it, as soon as that happened, like, I realized I can't raise two kids. <laughs> It went from zero to two, because I was going to be raising that baby and that baby daddy, you know? And there's no need for that. I was busy. <laughs> yeah, I just, I had a couple of jobs. There's no time. And uh, I, at the time I found out, uh, you know, your body goes through a lot of changes. And I didn't realize that I really did listen to my body very carefully. And so I knew something was off. And a part of me was like, this can't be that. And so I waited before I took a test, and I took a test on Labor Day. Uh, yeah, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> I took a test on Labor Day and then got the abortion on September 11th. <laughs> Hashtag I'll never forget, you know what I mean? Because my life is great, and that's just the opening they had, so I took it. <laughs> And I just, like, I, you know, as soon as it happened, too, I knew that I was just going to someday have to talk about it because you can't keep that shit inside. That timeline's too perfect. 
You know, that wasn't me, that was the universe. And I was gonna talk about it. Um, but I didn't feel comfortable talking about it, you know? And I, as soon as I found out, uh, I knew automatically in my head, I was like, I have to have an abortion. I just can't do this. I'm in transitional housing. I just got sober. I know what my life looks like if I have a kid. And that means that everything in my, else in my life goes away. I do everything in my power to financially support that kid, but that doesn't mean I can't emotionally. It doesn't mean I can't, you know, in other ways, I go into basic needs mode. And to me, that wasn't what a child needs. That's, you know, that's the upbringing that I had, and I'm a fucking recovering alcoholic, you know? <laughs> you know? And so I didn't want that cycle to happen all over again. Because like I said, I knew what that looked like, and I didn't want to do that. That's not what I wanted. And so as soon as I made that decision, uh, I felt very relieved. I felt very, I felt very, very excited in the way that I had that option because I did go to Planned Parenthood and that saved me. And I went in on my own and that was fine. That was a decision that I made. And they were so nice and so caring and it wasn't necessarily an easy thing to go through by myself, but I did. And I'm glad that they were there to be supportive when I didn't know who I could ask to help support me necessarily, you know? And, and now I look back and not only doing stand-up but talking about being a recovering alcoholic and just all the shit that's happened in my life and trying to make that funny, but I want to be able to help people, you know? Like, to do comedy and to do recovery kind of comedy and to be able to tell my story maybe when people have a stigma of what an addict looks like. I'm an addict, you know, and it's not necessarily what they think one is. But if I can turn the conversation on, then that's something I can do. And I think if I was raising a family, I couldn't do that. I just don't think that that's something that I would do. And so I'm so grateful that everyone is here and is supporting. And I really appreciate it because this gives me a lot more courage to be able to talk about it when I don't feel like I had that courage to do it in the first place. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much.